uh, which could have been who knows what. Equipment, people, and they're on a mission. Wait, so. wait, 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 wait. The woman wasn't a Navy SEAL. They don't take the women in, in the SEALs. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I thought they were in all branches, but I could be mistaken. But, uh, I don't know. I just, well, uh, whatever. So what do you mean dropping off the cargo? You mean the boats that they were able to, like, transfer technology then give us back the boats? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. The uh, SEALs were on a different mission to put something in place, and they knew the boats would be caught, so they just let them get caught. And uh, cover up the fact that... Uh, oh, you're, you're looking at the positive side, that Obama's so smart that he tricked the Iranians. Ah. See, it came How do you like... I'm sorry I'm not that smart. I didn't see... I didn't know that. The government is so smart that they released frogmen to do things underwater that we don't know about, and then they made a, a show of getting caught? Oh, I didn't see that. Is this a product of living in Eugene, Oregon, this kind of thinking, or what? Is it the fireplace smoke that's getting to you after all these years? What are you burning in that fireplace? What do they burn up there in Eugene, Oregon, that they think like this? KSFO, Nick, we're talking about the lowest point in a U.S. military history, which occurred two days ago and is not being covered by Jake Tapperhead. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just think that these uh, combat boats, I mean, there's no reason they should be out that far into the sea. I mean... They're supposed to be operating in coastal waters, not in the middle of the Persian Gulf. All right. So, what do you? What's your point? Well, I'm thinking. I mean, they could have been sent there, and they could have had something on board that they didn't even know they had on board, and then the Iranians pick it up. I, I still don't follow you. I don't understand what you. Well, what are you all you getting at here? What do you mean there's something aboard? Well, what, a, deliver, a delivery of, of smoked salmon from Zabar's? What do you mean, something aboard? Some food they can't get in Iran? A meatball from from Little Italy? What do you mean, something aboard? Uh, maybe missile defense technology, anything. I mean, you can put so much stuff on a small hard drive, just tuck it under board. And so you're saying, you're saying it's worse than I think? That that they would, but how did they how did they get off course? Is the question? How did twenty dummies on two fast boats not know where they're going and and go aground on a, on a sandbar? I just it, it makes no sense to me either. I mean, twenty I, dummies didn't know they were heading to a sandbar. We do all day. Is all right, that's the new military under Barry Obama and the leadership. Back in a minute. How do we keep America safe and strong without either isolating ourselves or trying to nation build all over the world? Oh, well, I can't do that. I can't do that because of the Constitution. And I can't do that because Michelle would kill me. She goes before a largely African American audience in Louisiana and basically implies that. If he was, uh, you know, she screamed, run for, be president again. I can't do that because of the Constitution, because Michelle would kill me. All right. So here's the cover story on the Navy incident. The 10 sailors were held by Iran, right? The Navy is now saying that they made a navigational mistake that led them into Iranian waters, but they didn't communicate that to their commanders before they were being intercepted. In other words, they're saying that the the men ran into the waters by mistake and then held it back, didn't report it to their commanders. Well, that seems to me a violation of military law, doesn't it? <clears throat> doesn't it? The sailors did not radio in to tell their commanders they were off course before encountering the Iranians. They did not report this navigational error at the time, said Defense Secretary Carter in an interview. Really? Then they should be given court-martials. Either one way or the other. Who's lying, Carter or the men who went aground? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And when I said that, by the way, last night, it was strange that some in the chamber didn't agree and applaud with that. I mean, you know, that's kind of a weird thing. I, I didn't say that it's the strongest in the world because of me. I mean, I understand why they wouldn't want to give me credit for it, which is true. It, it's because the United States of America for 250 you know, years has been, has been working to make us the strongest, but that should not be a controversial statement. All right. He was off by 10 years, but that's okay. He's the president of the United States. I'm sure if he went to school, they'd give him A's anyway. We're actually 240 years old as a nation, Mr. Obama. But okay, you didn't learn that at Harvard, and that's not important. Then he said he can't serve four more years because Michelle would kill me. But we're not going to do Obama bashing. He bashes himself every time he speaks. Every time the, the, sh the shyster speaks, he bashes himself. So why he doesn't stop, I don't understand, other than narcissism and egomania. Can he just stop? Can he shut up? Can he just shut up and govern or do nothing for the rest of the year? Go on another Hawaiian vacation? Get another 70 personal assistants for his wife to show what a great man he is? Can he just shut up? No. Keeps attacking, attacking America. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the incident of the naval boats. I want to talk about service animal abuse stories. This is what I want to talk about because I think it's very interesting. And now the military under Ash Carter, who was a disgrace, Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, says that they went aground because they were off course. They made navigational errors, and they didn't report it to their commanders on the mothership, which I told you there was a mothership. No one talks about the mothership. You know what's on a mothership? Attack helicopters, everything you can imagine. They could have been sent within a few minutes to rescue these guys. They weren't told they were off course. So now they're blaming them. So they went off course and didn't report it to their command structure. To me, that is a, I don't know, it's an article something hearing. Shouldn't they uh, see if they did this on purpose? I don't believe that's the case. I believe that's a complete lie. They're using them as fall guys and the one fall girl for something else. There's something else to, to this story that we don't seem to get any much than we'll ever get to know what really happened in Benghazi under Hillary Clinton or things like that. It's a gigantic cover-up machine. If you actually knew how much money this government spends on public relations agents, you'd be shocked. I don't know if anyone's actually published the figures. Every one of Obama, Obama's uh, minions, has a PR circle around them of individuals. Then there's a PR budget for the agencies that runs probably in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So when you read a story, you hear Jake Tapper or Wolf Blitzer give you a report, they're reading a PR release that is not made to look like a PR release, and they themselves are part of the PR release. That's how it worked in the old Soviet Union. That's how Pravda and his vets, Ivestia, worked. They were mouthpieces for the government. That's what these people are. They're no different. And so... You don't really know the truth. I don't know the truth. All I can use is some kind of deductive logic here. And my logical mind is telling me the story stinks to high heaven. That if they went off course and didn't report it to their higher command to cover it up that they were off course, which I doubt very much, then they're punishable by some kind of court-martial. I don't think that's what happened. And secondly, there's something more to the story with Iran. It was strictly from my point of view to make Iran look good. The weekend before Obama gives Iran $70 billion to use to make missiles with. They want us to think suddenly that Iran is a good a nation run by good people. That they're really not Islamic madmen who have poisoned the entire world with Islamic ra radicalism. Suddenly they're our friends. Just like Castro is not a murderer, they're our friends. Uh, it's all a propagandist ploy, in my estimation, in order to again... Make the American dummy think that there's nothing wrong with giving $70 billion to the nation of Iran in order to uh, just give it back to them so they can build missiles with it. 
If you want to call on that or the fact that people are bringing crazy animals on airplanes and abusing the, uh, you know, the whole story of uh, service animals today. We had a story of a turkey on a plane. I think it's worth hearing about. Let's begin in this hour on the radio. I'm going to smash my head through a screen. I have a call screen who's supposed to tell you you're on the radio. You're on the radio, Tim. Okay, thank you. Uh, I speak Persian fluently, and I understand the Persian mentality. And this is nothing more than window dressing for the public, but you just, uh, just now made this stimulus statement. And uh, to make them look, to make both sides look good, that they're, they're called... Right. American, dumb American sailors go off course. They're so stupid that they can't do basic navigation, which anyone running a, a, a pleasure boat has to know how to do. Uh, and the idiots run aground, and then the wonderful, nice Persians, really the Iranians, the Persians were different, save them and give us back our poor helpless sailors isn't that the whole story yes yeah, don't forget exactly what you just said don't forget those boats are meant to go in shallow water they use it in the second world war and also in vietnam they go to the coastline they don't get stuck they're not meant to get stuck it's very hard for me to understand and believe that those yeah these are oh by the way these are very old boats uh, design wise they would they go back many years they go back almost to the vietnam era and the fact is, is that they're made for very shallow water. One or two foot draft is about it. What were they doing in the middle of the Persian Gulf? Can anyone explain that to me? Well, they went. Uh, it was joyride. They want to. They want to. They want to show something to the world. No, I. Well, they can't just take boats on a joyride. They were sent there by their commanders under the instruction of the girl who runs the U.S. Navy who was under the command of somebody in the, in, the, in the Oval Office who got through with a party late at night after partying with her friends in the Obama White House and decided to pull this trick uh, on the world in order to make the Iranians look good. That, that's what I think. You think we'll ever know the truth? I doubt it. I wonder what these poor sailors are going to go through now, probably be given medals, medals of honor. 855-400-7282. Something's wrong with this picture. I'm sorry. Well, we can't speculate any further. Uh, have, we, have we milked this for all it's worth and gone on to something new now? The service animal may be better. FTL, Mike, welcome to the program. Uncle Mike, it's an honor to speak with you, especially about this situation, which... I swear to God, I always think about you when I deal with this every single day in my, uh, here in uh, Miami Beach, which is a, a liberal city, and I, I can understand you when you talk about the cesspool of uh, San Francisco. But anyway, the, the, the lying, fraudulent, uh, self-entitled liberals who, who lie about their phony service animal registrations just so they can prance around with the dog in their arms inside the grocery store. Oh, Florida is one of the worst. Miami is one of the worst places for uh, service animal abuse. Yeah. Well, what's the weirdest service animal that you've seen? Was it a, a, a worse than a turkey? Uh, well, look, uh, first of all, an emotional comfort dog, you know, I did some research, but by the ADA is not a, a service animal you can bring into a restaurant or a, a, a food service, uh, like a grocery store, these natural food stores with a salad bar, the fresh produce out. Women are. Uh, I don't even. Forget about service animals. Salad bars? Are you kidding me? Have you seen what liberals do in, the, in Whole Foods and other places? Sticking their hands into salad bars and, and grabbing out whole handfuls and throwing them in little baggies to take home under their raincoats? Well, I saw a liberal carrying a, a dog in a papoose on her chest. Leaning into the salad bar, reaching across with the spoon to grab some other food. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. What? And the dog was dribbling saliva into the salad bar? It, you know, it's just disgusting. And then you, you can't ask them because they say, you can't ask me about that. I, no, I, and, no, no. They get, very, they get very defensive. You know, they buy them on the Internet, like you said, for who knows what. But it's it, everybody. Yeah, a few dollars, them. you can get a service. You can get a service vest. You get a serve. Maybe we could start putting them on ourselves instead of dogs, and we can get special treatment. Say we're a service, per a service person. Liberal, self-entitled, pompous. You know, uh, I can do whatever I want to do. Attitude is what. You know, this started with compassion for people. Let's say who are blind and needed seeing eye dogs. Who would ever complain about that? Nobody. 
And then we know there are many cases of returning veterans who have PTSD for whom the dog is life and death. That's a reality. A total 